right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Ovens Garage. And today we're gonna to be installing this um, HX35 style turbo exhaust housing onto my stock H1C turbo. Um, if you watch my videos, a couple of videos back of where I installed the 62 millimeter compressor wheel um, and compressor housing that I bought from Turbo Labs America, um, I did that upgrade and then I put it back on the truck and I had the stock, uh, well, I had put on a 16 cm exhaust housing with the stock turbine wheel. The stock turbine wheel size is a 70 mil by 60 mil um, exhaust wheel. So 70 being the larger, 60 being the smaller. This one um, is a 76 by 64 mil and the exhaust housing is machined to that and it's a 12 cm exhaust housing. So you can, you can tell it's a 12 cm exhaust housing because it's written here just inside and it's also waste gated. So this is the style that they have on the HX35 and it will actually bolt right up to um, the stock exhaust if you have it or in my case I, um, I have a four inch exhaust but it has a V-band style exhaust clamp on it. So um, the biggest thing that I noticed after installing the uh, 62 mil uh, turbo kit is that you know, yes, it actually, it works very well. And, you know, it sounds different. It performs better on the highway, it seems under load. Um, but I did notice that it takes, it seemed a bit laggier, um, if I'm going to be honest with you. And I wanted to, I wanted to kind of, you know, make it spool a bit quicker and hopefully gain a bit more performance out of it, uh, maybe a bit more boost. So, you know, this is why I'm upgrading the exhaust turbine wheel and the exhaust hosing, I wanted to be smaller, um, especially with a five speed when you're shifting through the gears, you want to, you want the turbo to spool right away. So um, I'm hoping that this is going to solve that issue that I'm having. I mean, it's not really an issue, but um, I'm hoping that I can get my spool up a little bit quicker. Uh, so we'll get this installed today and uh, show you what the end result is. All right, just taking a quick look through the parts here. Um, again, I got this from Turbo Labs America. Uh, this is the HX35 style exhaust housing um, with wastegate here and the wastegate actuator mounts um, I guess I'd say like vertically uh, to the to the exhaust housing so you know it'll sit kind of like like this or something like that or I guess like that um, and then the wastegate will open up uh, this exhaust housing um, I had to I had a special order from Turbo Labs. He had to drill out because um, this was actually designed for, I think it was for a second gen truck where, you know, two of them have studs and then two of them have bolts. So he drilled them out for me and then repositioned the uh, actuator arm here. So that way I could have a vertically mounted uh, exhaust housing, or sorry, um, wastegate. And then this exhaust housing has been machined out, like I said, to this this is a 10 blade turbine wheel versus the stock 12 blade turbine turbine wheel. The stock one is a 60 by 70 and this one is a 76 by 64 mil. So um, my plan to run the wastegate is I'm not going to drill into the compressor housing. I'm actually going to, um, there's an eighth inch MPT hole on the turbo outlet elbow. I'm just going to run this off that eighth each inch MPT hole. This is a quarter inch hose barb. And I've got this quarter inch um, hose line here that I got from Canadian Tire and I'm gonna run that right back to the wastegate actuator here, right there. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna test this on the air compressor to see what uh, to see what pressure that wastegate opens up at. And that'll give me a rough idea of, you know, what sort of boost conditions I can see before the wastegate opens. All right, uh, first things first here, I'm going to put the exhaust backing plate over the um, wastegate actuator port here. So gasket on first, and then the exhaust backing plate. And then I'm gonna put anti-seize on all the bolts here and tighten them down to 15 foot-pounds or 100 and 180 inch-pounds. And now I'm gonna mount the wastegate and I'll tighten these down to uh, probably 10 to 15 foot pounds. All right, the wastegate is on now. 
Um, what I tried to do was snug up the wastegate as far as I could that way. Um, so it would hold it closed under zero boost conditions. And I tighten these three bolts down to 100 inch pounds. All right, now it's a little hard to tell with the gauge on this uh, regulator what pressure the um, wastegate's opening at, but I'll show you here. Uh, I've got the air attachment on the air compressor with a regulator hooked up to the wastegate um, just through a hose. So as you can see, it probably, it opens up around like, so you can see it moving there. So I can see it start to open up what looks to be after like 20 PSI. So it might be a bit low, but I can always change the wastegate if I want to after, you know, wide open up at 30. It's just barely starts to move at 20, you know, I'd say that's like 20, 25, 30. And then it's wide open at 30. Wide open at 30, maybe half at 25, closed at 15, closed at 18. Need a better gauge. All right, at least we know it works. and just doing a quick comparison between the um, new exhaust wheel and the old exhaust wheel. So 12 blade, or sorry, 12 blade on the old one, 10 blade on the new one. We've got, this should be 60, or sorry, 76 mil on the outside. And then on the inside, it should be 64 mil. Right about there. Yeah, that's about 64 mil. And then on the old one is 60 by 70, so 70 on the outside, 70, and 60, yeah, 60 on the inside. Before we install the new wheel, I just need to take the seal off of the, uh, the old uh, turbine wheel here and then put it on the new one. I just rebuilt this turbo less than a month ago, so I'm going to reuse that seal on this one. All right, so for this 12 point nut here, we're going to tighten it down to 124 inch pounds after we put some red thread locker on it. And remember, it is reverse threads. And now we're gonna test and see how it spins. So we'll hold the heat shield at the back, make sure it doesn't rub and see if we have any issues. That's just the heat shield ribbon. So far so good. All right, and I'll throw the compressor housing back on with the V-band clamp and just snug it down for now until I get back to the truck. Okay, and now I can throw on the exhaust housing. And now that everything is loosely fit together, we can head back to the truck, clock everything in the right position, and then tighten it all up. I'm gonna take the plug out of the outlet of this elbow and then I'm going to put in that uh, quarter inch hose barb. All right, and here's the uh, eighth inch MPT to quarter inch hose barb I was talking about. Before we put the uh, turbo back in here, I'm going to drill a eighth inch MPT hole uh, and plug it with an eighth, eighth inch MPT plug for now until I get to EGT sensor in here. But you never do.
tighten the V-band clamp to 110 inch-pounds. All right, uh, now I'm gonna cut my boost reference line to length, and then I'll clamp it on with uh, a couple of these hose clamps. All right, so I've got the uh, entire exhaust assembly uh, mounted now. I actually used that full length of hose for the boost reference line. Um, I did notice with the HX35 exhaust housing, I had to loosen a couple of the exhaust clamps on the bottom of the truck to push the exhaust back a little bit, uh, probably because of the wastegate. Um, but other than that, everything uh, bolted up and it wasn't too, too painful. Mm -hmm. 